Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we count down the 5 greatest Hugo Strange stories ever told. Good old Professor Hugo Strange, Batman's first proper recurring rogue, that is if you exclude the really obscure ones like Dr. Death and the Mad Monk. He's also a character I've really been neglecting on the channel. That might cause you to believe I don't like him, but that ain't the case at all. Hugo is a really fascinating rogue with interesting and unique motivations. He's also usually written with a very eccentric and entertaining personality. If there is any flaw to the character, it's the quite generic and dull visual design. Anyway, so let's take a look at the greatest Hugo stories ever told. And as usual, these are just my opinions, so feel free to write your own lists in the comments. Number 5. Down to the Bone a one-shot published in Batman Annual No. 10 in 1986. It was written by Doug Monk and penciled by Dennis Cowan. In this one, someone has orchestrated a deviously clever scheme to destroy the entire life of Bruce Wayne and strip him of everything. Bruce loses his fortune, his manor, his ward Jason Todd to the authorities, Alfred suffers a stroke, and Batman is framed for a string of crimes. With nothing left but himself and the clothes on his back, with the bat costume underneath, a desperate Wayne takes to the streets and tries to uncover the identity of the mysterious perpetrator behind his suffering. It's you Hugo Strange, of course. Why else would I put this on the list? Down to the Bone is a great and overlooked Batman tale that's very reminiscent of more famous comics like Spider-Man Craven's Last Hunt and Daredevil Born Again, although this story predates both of those. It's the grandest scheme the good professor has ever pulled off, and we've rarely seen Batman so beaten. This story also predates Nightfall and the Cult, and it might be the very first one where the Dark Knight is utterly defeated. Hugo himself is portrayed in a great way too, wanting to replace Batman and Wayne, as he's taken up the living in Wayne Manor. He's an obsessive and delusional lunatic, yet one really clever bastard. Those are the typical characteristics of the guy, and they're done really well here. Number 4. The Monster Men a six-issue miniseries published in 2006. It was written in pencil by Matt Wagner. This one is a modernized retelling of the second classic Hugo Strange story from 1940, where the professor employed his mutated monster men for the first time. In this retro tale, set shortly after Batman Year One, Strange is depicted as a mad scientist, just like he was in the pre-crisis era. However, this comic introduces a new spin on the character, namely a physical inferiority complex. Besides being portrayed as a bald man with poor sight, as usual. Hugo is also shown to be a man of very small stature. He's a poor physical specimen, in other words, and envies other men more fortunate in that department. In order to change his condition, Strange conducts research in genetics, hoping to discover the means to manipulate genes. To get the necessary funds for his experiments, Hugo lends money from mobster Sal Moroni, but all he's able to create are hideous mutated monster men out of his guinea pigs. This is a great story that very much feels like a Batman tale from 1939 or the early 40s, yet with a heavy touch of Frank Miller's Batman Year One present as well. It's a blend of those two things and it works really well. The comic also offers a far more fleshed out and rounded take on Hugo than what we got in the original 1940 story. There he was a stereotypical evil supervillain whose only motivation was that he was an evil supervillain. This Hugo is far more interesting and also sympathetic as he's driven by a wish to improve his physical shortcomings. His motivations aren't really evil at all, he just doesn't want to be a half-blind chrome-headed midget. Number 3. Transference this one was published across four issues of Gotham Knights in 2000, and it was written by Devin Grayson and penciled by Roger Robinson. Transference is a direct sequel to Doug Monk's Prey, the 1991 arc that reintroduced and revamped Hugo for the post-crisis continuity. That story was also set shortly after Batman Year One. Seems to be a trend with strange stories. And this one takes place over a decade later. During all that time, Hugo has been missing, but now he's back. And knowing the secret identity of the Batman, he plans to ruin Bruce Wayne's life and take his place, as usual in other words. He confronts Bruce at Wayne Enterprises and tries to force the secret out of him, but this activates a hypnotic failsafe set by Bruce, making him forget that he is the Dark Knight, leaving only the fake playboy persona. With Batman now being a useless dimwit, it's up to his allies Nightwing and Robin to stop Strange and his devious plot to usurp the role of the Cape Crusader. 
This is a great story that sadly seems to be completely forgotten, probably because it was quickly replaced by another sequel to Prey, Terror, also written by Monk. I think that's a real shame, as Terror is nowhere near as good as Transference in my opinion. This one offers a fascinating look at Hugo, Batman's most obsessive and psychotic fanboy. He's a total nutjob here and a very entertaining character to read, but he's also insanely clever. This being the psychologist version of Hugo, established in Prey, he always knows just the right buttons to push with a person, no matter who it is. Strange can see through anyone, be it Bruce, Dick Grayson or even Catwoman who also appears here. Despite being totally cuckoo, he's a brilliant manipulator who would give even Heath Ledger's Joker a run for his money. Number 2. Strange Apparitions a multiple issue arc published in Detective Comics in 1977, this classic was written by Steve Englehart and penciled by Marshall Rogers. In it we find Hugo Strange back in Gotham after a long stay in Europe and he's got a new scheme cooking. Strange has taken on the identity of Dr. Todd Hunter and opened up a special clinic for the wealthy people of Gotham. But the patients receive no care, instead they're treated to Hugo's monster men's serum, turning them into obedient hulking beasts. They're then treated to a temporary cure as long as they follow Hugo's orders and invite friends from their social circles to the clinic, bringing more lambs to the slaughter so to speak. But one day Bruce Wayne checks into the clinic. So yeah, this is a classic seminal arc where Strange became the second rogue to discover Batman's secret identity after Ra's al Ghul had been the first to do so six years earlier. It's also the character's big comeback as he hadn't appeared since 1940. So in other words, this is a story that made Hugo into a recurring staple villain. If it wasn't for this one, old Hugo might very well have been a forgotten Batman villain lost to time. Besides all of that, this tale is also the first to flesh the character out and give him more of a personality and motives beyond the generic mad scientist of old. It's established here that Strange greatly admires Batman and views him as an equal and their battle as an epic joust between gentlemen of brilliance. After discovering his true identity, Hugo's man crush on the masked manhunter grows even larger and while he initially intended to sell the secret to the highest bidder, he eventually changes his mind and does his best to guard the secret instead. This arc is incredibly seminal in the history of Hugo Strange and we really owe everything to this one. Another typical Strange trope that starts here is him dressing up and masquerading as Batman and Bruce Wayne. And now for the greatest Hugo Strange story of them all, number 1, Prey. A five-part story published in Legends of the Dark Knight in 1991, it was written by Doug Monk and penciled by Paul Gulacci. So this is the one, the story that rebooted the character of Hugo Strange for the post-crisis continuity. Here we're introduced to Hugo, a psychiatrist who's completely obsessed with Batman. This being set early in the Masked Manhunter's career, he's still wanted by the police. As such, the mayor creates a special task force with the mission to capture the Batman. He ironically appoints hero cop Captain Jim Gordon as head of this squad. And after being impressed with hearing Hugo's insights into Batman's psyche on a talk show, the mayor makes Strange a special consultant on the team. This dangerous and insane man is now an official investigator on the Batman case and being as brilliant as he is, he gets closer and closer to deducing the vigilante's secret identity. This is not only the best Hugo Strange story, but also easily one of the greatest Batman stories ever told. I kinda regret not putting it on my top 20. Anyway, so this comic brilliantly revamped Strange as a psychiatrist as opposed to a mad scientist and made him more fascinating and bonkers than he had ever been. It's here that his obsession with Batman reached whole new levels. It's established that he greatly admires the Dark Knight for being such a free spirit, doing as he pleases and representing a sort of dark desire. Basically Hugo is jealous of Batman and wishes that he could be him and do the things he does. He even likes to dress up in a makeshift bat costume and pretend that he's the caped crusader in his apartment. Another interesting and rather unique aspect to the character featured in this story are psychological issues with women. This Hugo feels inferior to other men where this apartment is concerned and has therefore developed a disdain for the fairer sex. He's an expert at analyzing other people's messed up psyche but his own is in dire need of an analysis as well. To me, this is the definitive Hugo comic and it features the greatest depiction of the character that we've ever gotten. 
So there you have it, those are the 5 best Hugo Strange stories ever told in my opinion. As for future Hugo videos, I sadly can't really think of many subjects to cover. I do however plan to review his first appearance from the Golden Age, and eventually cover some of his appearances on cartoon shows, like the animated series and the Batman. Hopefully I'll get some more ideas as well. Well anyway, as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.